A bit windy. There's the destination for tonight in the background there. Green, sorry, I'm on Green Gable now. Great Gable. And uh, just see Windy Gap. That's the path uh, going along. So not far to go now. I thought the wind would have been uh, worse than this, but it's not too bad. So hopefully, we'll at least get pitched up in some decent weather anyway. Okay, I'll see you on top of uh, Great Gable. Right, here's the pitch. Uh, it's not brilliant. Rocks everywhere. Uh, I've got a space where there's less rock. As you can see, just rock everywhere. I don't think there's any other pitches near. somewhere. And there's a summit just up there. Well you can't see the summit, it's just over the brow there. That's uh, Scarfell Pike over there and the Clag. Right, I'm set up on top of Great Gable. Nice little climb up here. Um, the last part, but you know, you come off Green Gable and you've got Windy Gap, and then you've got a bit of a scramble. I said uh, after Hell Villain that would be me. That would be my last. Uh, Hell Villain would be last high hill, you know, this year. But here I am up another three thousand feet. 
hill with a scramble and slippery rocks and all the rest of it, but never mind, I'm here. Uh, pitching up's not the best, it's rocky, couldn't get the pegs in where I wanted, uh, it's just a nightmare. Just um, I was thinking about putting a tent on the other side of the summit. Just there on that ledge, that would have been a uh, on the side uh, looking down towards Dale Head, but um, it was just too windy that side. Right, it's tea time, so I've uh, got some noodles, curry flavoured, a tin of uh, tinned meat. If you're ex army like me, it's called truncheon meat. Um, got some sweet chilli sauce, I might just hoi that in as well. It's all food in it. And that's my main course. So, let's have like 400 mils of water. I brought about, uh, how much is that? That's, uh, half a litre and this holds a litre so I've brought a litre and a half of water this time and that's probably more than enough I've got at least two or three cups of tea left in this in this big thing here and I'll probably only have another couple of cups Maybe two cups in the morning. Right. So that's the water for the uh, noodles. Let's get that boiling away. That's a Pocket Rocket 2, MSR Pocket Rocket 2. It's quite good. I always normally use the bigger gas canisters. You get you get the smaller ones, but they're hopeless. You know, that one one wild camp and you have to go and buy another one. There might be a tiny, there might be a little bit left in the bottom, but it, it just you wouldn't want to take that on the next camp because it would do, it just wouldn't be enough. You'd have to bring two canisters in. So I find the bigger canisters. You know, I get about at least three wild camps, three nights. Uh, might as well hoist some sweet chilli sauce in as well. Why not? I'm not going to put it all in, that'll do. So, a bit of a mixture there, but all goes down the hole. I find if you bring noodles and rice and things like that, and it means you're going to have to bring more water. Or, fi or find, you know, or filter the water on the way up. Um, whereas, if you bring like, uh, I don't know, steak and uh, sausages, bacon, things like that, you know, people think that bringing noodles and that's lighter, but I think you've just you, you've got to bring more water. I suppose it's a personal thing. Sometimes I bring the frying pan and bring sausages and mushrooms and not, you know, have a good fry up and that. And then other times I just bring rice or noodles or whatever. It just saves bringing a cup. Anyway, there's me uh, dinner. And uh, nice big chunks of truncheon meat in there. 
noodles, chili sauce and curry sauce. That's a bit of a mixture, isn't it? Anyway, see how, see what it tastes like. Yeah, it's quite nice. Quite nice. Everything tastes nice when you go camping. If you had it at home, it would it would it wouldn't taste very nice at all. But when you're camping, it's delicious. Right, cup of tea now. And pudding, and pudding is a couple of brunch bars. And that's it. And the rain started again. And I've got enough water for probably at least one cup, maybe two cups of tea in the morning. Because I won't have any more tea now. I've got I've got some beers to that I could drink for uh, for later on. It's about six o'clock now. So I'll have a cup of tea, a couple of a couple of them brunch bars. And then I'll uh, start settling in for the night. A couple of beers before bedtime. I am. Um, I'm just inside the the veranda here with the with the cooker and that, and I've got the um, what I do with the uh, I, I, I always use a uh, the footprint, the Acto footprint that comes. Well, you it's uh, you've got to pay extra for it. I always just roll it back if I'm cooking in there. So it's rolled back and then if I'm not cooking I can pull it back out again if I want to. Just frighten it, it gets melted or something, you know. Because they're not cheap, I think they're about 60 or 70 quid for the footprint for the Acto. <coughs> I, I, if I need extra water I could always go you know, go. I've got uh, a Sawyer fil filter, so I could filter more water if I if I needed more. But um, I tend I tend to bring a liter of water, and that normally does me for a, for an overnight wild camp. But if I'm cooking, if I'm doing any cooking, it needs water. Then I probably need a a bit more, like I did today. I brought another an extra half a liter. I'll do I'll do a kit review sometime because uh, I, I like watching other people's kit reviews. I like to see what they're carrying and uh, what they use and that. There you go, nice cup of tea, and then you could drink straight from there straight away. You know, people say, oh, it's burning hot because it's metal and I've never had a problem. It does, it cools down quite quickly, the titanium. Um, and as I say, if the tea, if the tea or the coffee gets a bit cool, just stick it back on the, on the gas or, and heat it back up. It's not a problem. Saves you carrying extra cups and thermos flasks and all that, you know. Anyway, I'll leave you there. That's uh, Lake Windermere. If you can see it through the through the crag, 
It's uh yeah. Yeah, Windermere. That's where all the tourists go. There's Scarfell Pike. The one on the far right is Scarfell. The one next is Scarfell Pike. I camped up there, I don't know, six, six or seven weeks ago. Yeah, nice and clear now. Yeah, I've just walked off the summit and the wind's calmed down a little bit and there's my tent there. It's kind of on the, the kind of eastern flank. Evening. Um, just chilling out now. It's, um, it's dark o'clock. Got dark really early. Uh, well, really early, really quickly. It seemed like all of a sudden it got uh, got quite dark around about seven o'clock mark. Um, and it's and it got really cold. So um, I'm just chilling out with a couple of beers. And then I'm going to bed because I was up uh, quite early this morning, as I normally am. Uh, yeah, and then in the morning I'll be up early. I, I always up early, and uh, I'll probably just pack up, have a cup of tea, pack up, and go like I normally do. Probably it'll still be dark. Probably um, there's a little bit of a tricky, rocky bit. Just getting back onto Windy Gap. Windy Gap. But apart from that, it's pretty straightforward getting off this mountain. Um, not like uh, Helvellyn a couple of weeks ago. I nearly broke my neck, actually. Well, <laughs> nearly broke my ankle. It's been giving me a bit of jip, actually, the last week or two. But it's not too bad. Just uh, shows you you've got to be so careful on these hills. One little slip and... Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's quite dangerous, especially you know, you know, when it's when it, when they're wet. Uh, you know, they're just dead slippy. It's like walking on ice. Never mind. Uh, I'll see you in the morning. Raining. Definitely raining. Just looked at the weather forecast there for uh, midnight on Great Gable and it's got 10% chance of rain I think I'll phone them up and say it's definitely a 100% chance of rain because it's uh, chucking it down it's eased off slightly now Morning uh, It's just after 4 in the morning Um, a bit of a kip, 
on and off. It's uh, the odd gust now and again, but I've just got one massive gust. Yeah, there's another one. Massive gust. It's raining. Um, probably get up in a minute and have a cup of tea. I reckon the guy lines are probably quite slack now. That's why it's uh, really flapping around. Could we'll probably do with uh, tightening the guy lines up, but uh, I'll probably be packing away before long, another hour or so. So I'll not bother now, I'm not, I'm not going out now, not on that. Right, I'm not sure if I'll uh, be back on again. Because once I pack up, uh, I'll be straight down that hill. Morning. Uh, it's just gone 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm back at the waterfall above uh, Seathwaite Farm. Uh, I left, I left Great Gable at 5 o'clock this morning, uh, really quite poor conditions, couldn't see, you know, pitch dark, foggy, rain, uh, you could only see, I don't know, 10 feet or so in front of you, so anyway, um, I managed to get off Great Gable, I have to be uh, really careful because it's uh, not easy to get off the top of there. Uh, the wind was howling on Windy Gap, it was uh, living up to its name, really quite gusty, I don't know, I mean 50-60 mile an hour, uh, the same on top of Green Gable, but once I dropped down the other side of Green Gable it was not too bad, uh, and the, the, kind of the, the fog started clearing, and it's just, just gotten light now, it's just getting light now, it's still uh, looks lighter on the camera actually uh, but anyway I think that's it for this this wild camp um, until the next time see you on the next one <laughs>